Hey everyone, Jolt here. Today I'm going to talk about concept visualizations. What they are, what they are used for, and most importantly, what's my workflow for creating simple concept visuals. I'm not good at drawing. I can draw a stick figure, maybe a simple scene, especially if I can copy it from somewhere, but that's where it stops. At the same time, I am a visual thinker. I like to think in pictures, I like to think in diagrams, I like when things are visual. So over the years, I've perfected a workflow for myself to bridge the gap from not being very good at drawing and being able to create simple visuals and visual diagrams, representations of my ideas. I want to walk you through some of the basics of my thinking about this process. So concept visualizations are not fine art and not data visualizations. These have their domain of their own and I'm not going to be talking about these today. Concept visualizations are functional visualizations of an abstract concept or idea and they typically consist of image and some text. If you just have text, then it's not really a visualization. If you only have an image, then it is going to be difficult to convey a complex idea. As an example, here's a page from the book From the Ground by Xu Bing. In this book, Xu Bing uses only emojis to tell a story. And if you look at this page, then after a couple of minutes, it's actually possible to decipher what this story is about. And without doubt, this has the benefit of being international. This is not language specific, so you can read this whatever your mother tongue is. But you can also understand or imagine that conveying complex ideas using this setup is pretty hard. So let's look at a couple of examples. One set of examples are what you could call simple visual metaphors. And in this case, a metaphor can be for a noun, for example, a typewriter for the word author, or a rocket for the verb launch, or it could be this guy out of the box for the adjective of being creative. And then, as another set of examples, these visualizations can also be more abstract, like a visualization for a process or instructions or flows. In this case, the example I brought here is my PKM wheel, and you can see the steps in my PKM system and how they come together. So finally, in this introduction part, let's look at what concept visualizations can be used for. So you can use them for presentations, you can use them for storytelling, you can use these visualizations in marketing, you can use them to explain concepts and probably lots of others. Why would you use them? Because these make your message A, less boring, B, it is easier to remember when you can tie a topic to a visual. And finally, it is easier to understand. If you choose the right visualizations, then your message will be more easily conveyed to your audience. Now that we know what concept visualizations are and what they're used for, let's look at how they are created using a simple workflow. So this is the workflow I'm following. This workflow has seven steps and we're going to walk through these seven steps. But before we do that, let's look at some of the things that you should not do. Don't wait for the muse. Even the biggest artists start to work and as they work, the idea emerges. There are very few people, if any, who just sit down, have this spark of an idea and come up with the most perfect visual to explain an idea. It doesn't work like that. It's not magic. It is a process and sometimes it's hard work. 
So make sure you get to work instead of sit around waiting for the muse or blame that the muse never came. There is no such thing as a muse in this case. And also, don't jump right into searching for stock images. Very often, instead of thinking, we have an idea, we want to represent something, and we jump in and start to search the web, start to search PowerPoint point icons, whatever, to find something that we can stick on that slide so we can convey our message. Don't do that because these typically lead to trivial ideas and in the end you will miss the mark on conveying the intended message. Most often the message you want to convey is more nuanced than just a stock image would do or maybe it is, a stock image can do but you need to find the right stock image. Don't just jump into searching right away but instead start by thinking of the message you want to convey. So think through what is it that you want to tell with the picture, what do you want the receiver of the information to think, feel after they've seen your visual and heard your explanation. And once you have this message in your mind, then think of keywords that you could use for searching for images or illustrations and also think of synonyms and antonyms for that keyword because these can also be very helpful in finding the right visualization. And this is a place where I use ChatGPT very often. ChatGPT is fantastic in coming up with synonyms, antonyms, as well as if you explain your message, it can come up with keywords to support your search when you're searching for icons and images. And if you want to be more creative, you can also ask ChatGPT to recommend poems or fine art that conveys the message that you want to convey and work from the pictures or images in these creations. And you can also think of or ask ChatGPT to help you with homonyms, homophones, homographs, because these may trigger visual puns and may just put the whole idea into a completely different light, which will help you find the right visualizations for the idea that you want to convey. And once you have your keywords, then think about the type of illustration that you need. So it could be image and text, as I explained earlier. It may be that in the end, it's a text only message that you want to convey. So it's okay to have text and it's also okay to have text only if that's the best solution. But it also could be a diagram or it could be a scene that you can compose using a couple of different icons that will convey a situation, a scene. And in some cases, if the message is simple or if you're, for example, doing user interface design, then just a single image and icon is perfectly sufficient. Once you know the type of image you want, the message you want and the keywords you want, this is the time when you can start searching or when you should start searching, looking on the internet, looking for inspiration. These are the typical places that I look. I have a flat icon subscription and this is my number one go-to place. Most of the images that you see in this presentation as well come from flat icon. Some of the visualizations also in this presentation I created with Midjourney and I have a dedicated video I'm going to include in the video description that shows you how you can use Midjourney to generate custom SVG icons. Of course, there's always Google and Google Image Search that's excellent for finding images as well as the Noun project. I'm going to include the link in the video description. The Noun project is a fantastic place 
if you're looking for icons and you're looking for creative ideas. So I think these are the basic go-to places. Apart from these, you might want to go to various stock photo places and photos might also be a good way to get inspiration or simply use the photo as your illustration. But before using an icon or an image from the internet, I recommend first building from your existing icons and images. This is especially important if you work in a system like Obsidian, where you can use these images to connect ideas. It is probably less important if you're creating PowerPoint presentations that are anyway disconnected. But if you do this in Obsidian, then using the images will increase the connectivity of the thoughts in your vault. So let me show you what I mean. I have an image library and I have a dedicated video. You'll find it as well in the video description, how to create this image library. This is an icon library that searches my entire Obsidian vault and pulls out all the icons that I have in my vault based on a naming convention. And if I want to reuse an icon from here, I can right click, click copy, and I can paste it into my drawing by pasting the icon from here. It will not paste the image, but will paste the reference to the image. And this way, reuse the existing resource and connect to the existing resource. And if you do this, then with Excolibrain, you will be able to see the connections between your thoughts using the icons. So in this example, what you can see here, this is the Excolibrain screen for the concept visualizations summary presentation, the concept map that we're looking at right now. So that's in the center. Above the slide, you have the sources, the parent nodes, and below it, you have the child nodes. In this case, you can see that there are lots of attachments as child nodes. These are the different images on the concept map. And if you look close enough, then you will see that each of these icons have a small number here at the top. And also in some cases, they have a small number on, on the bottom. In this case, I don't see it, but here you can see that the central node has the small 37 and the four. So what does it mean? It means it has four parents and has 37 children. And if I look at the children, then I can see that, for example, the paper airplane has nine parents. So this is an interesting example to look at. So let's jump in and take a look at what this paper airplane, where this paper airplane leads us. To do that, I need to click here on the paper airplane. And when I click on the paper airplane, then in the background, the paper airplane, the image was opened. And here in Excolibrain, I can see the paper airplane in the center, and I can see the different documents where I've used this paper airplane. So we can take a quick look at where I've used the paper airplane. So for example, I use the paper airplane in my book on a page summary for building a second brain. And here it is used in this metaphor where Tiago says that the reason I'm creating a mini summary of the book is because I'm packaging my learnings from the book and I'm sending it to my future self. So this is what this uh, represents right here. But I'm also using the same paper airplane in how to take smart notes in the virtual cycle. And you can see here that here again, the paper airplane appears. But as well as I use the paper airplane in digesting what you read. So this was a recent video I published and you can see 
that at the end of the process at step eight i'm using the paper airplane to represent the activity of publishing and so on so you get the idea that by reusing the image i'm able to connect ideas within my obsidian vault this is why i recommend that before going and looking for a brand new icon look at your icon library and think about which one could i repurpose how could i modify what i already have by adding another icon next to it or maybe just adding a line on top or something like that to make it usable for my specific purpose to convey my message so getting back to our story so back to concept visualizations in step six i recommend that you create cognitive loops for yourself we are loopy creatures this means that the way our mind works and the way we are able to be creative is by externalizing our ideas looking at them discussing them and through that shaping them seeing them in a different light so what can you do well you can try out different concepts you can try to draw some concepts even if your drawing is not very good like mine creating a simple visual with your own hands will go a long way to triggering your creativity and coming up with ideas that you never thought you had somehow your hands think in a different way than your mind does and also try to share your ideas with others show your visuals get feedback and through this looping you will be able to refine the visual that you're using and in step seven i recommend that you continue to practice this process practice the process of coming up with the message thinking through the synonyms and the keywords and the antonyms and all the good stuff thinking through the type of visualizations you want to create a scene an image a diagram or whatever use the internet to get some inspiration but then prioritize your own existing icons and icon library for sake of maximizing the connectivity by reuse within your obsidian vault and create cognitive loops draw share with others look at what you've created go back a couple of days later and if you do all of these then you will build up your muscle to come up with creative visual ideas my process my daily practice routine is to take a daily quote and then use mid-journey to create a visual for that in the visual thinking workshop discord server in the daily quote channel every day i share the visual i created and sometimes i share some of the additional thoughts i had while creating the visual and also sometimes i get feedback i get a discussion going with others in the community looking at the visuals i created i find this process a a lot of fun b an excellent exercise in practicing how to think through what would be a good visual for the quote what's the message for the quote how should i tell that quote i think this is an excellent way to practice but whatever your process for practicing i think the bottom line is to practice 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 and if you do that eventually you'll build up this muscle so that is all i wanted to share in terms of the process in closing i'd like to leave you with a small exercise i'm going to share a concept with you and i ask you to think about how you would visualize this concept please while you're working on your visualizations pause the video and then come back and look at my solution and compare yours to mine and let me know in the comments below what you found also if you're a member of the visual thinking workshop discord server 
then I ask you to post your solution in the chat and let's have a discussion about why you chose the visualization that you chose and why I did what I did. So the concept that I want to visualize is the one that's highlighted here. To be an effective reader within disciplines, you must learn to identify for any given subject whether it is best understood as a system of supporting systems, such as math and science, or a system of conflicting systems, such as philosophy, psychology, and economics. So this is the concept. Think of this as you're reading some texts within disciplines. You can see the beginning of the paragraph here as well if you need some context. And now pause the video, work out your visualization for this blue piece, and then when you're ready, continue the video. So welcome back. This is my solution. So I decided to create two visuals for the two concepts. In my mind, the system of supporting systems is like a pulley system where these different parts in the pulley system work together to help you lift a heavy weight. In case of a system of supporting systems, you need to master the systems to understand how they support each other. In case of systems of conflicting systems, in my mind, it is like a central point being pulled in several directions. It's like pulling rope, but you have multiple directions where force is applied to this central point and the balance will move to wherever the sum of the forces will lead it to. In case of systems of conflicting systems, you should explore how systems conflict each other and how they overlap and that will help you to better understand what you read and how it fits into the context. So that is my solution. Again, I'm super interested in the solution that you came up with. Please, in the comments or on the Discord server, share your ideas. Thank you.